By the mid-fourth century, the city was dying of thirst. Constantine's successors would have to develop a water supply far larger than Rome's to keep the city alive. The system they built would be one of the greatest engineering achievements of the ancient world. There were no local water resources within the city walls of Constantinople, and hence water had to be brought from a much greater distance than uh, anywhere else in the classical world and in the Mediterranean. The task fell to an emperor named Valens, who ruled from 364 to 378 AD. Valens oversaw an ambitious plan for the world's longest aqueduct system. Completed, it transported spring water a staggering 400 miles, equal to the combined length of all the Roman Empire's aqueducts. The main line began 150 miles west of Constantinople, deep in the hinterlands of Thrace. Byzantine engineers first had to find a way to maintain a consistent downward slope to keep the water moving. There are tunnels underground, there are channels that go along the surface, and there are, where necessary, these great aqueduct bridges. Between the 4th and 6th centuries, the Byzantines built 60 aqueduct bridges. The most impressive rose nearly 90 feet. Today, it's known as the Kushun Lugerme Aqueduct Bridge. Builders first constructed giant stone piers, or supports. Once the piers were raised, masons worked on massive arches. Wooden forms held the stones of each arch in place until the keystone could be positioned and the arch completed. The framework was then built on the next tier and the process repeated. Like the Romans, Byzantine masons adorned their bridges with religious carvings. But unlike the Romans, they used Christian, not pagan, symbols. More than 80 miles away, another aqueduct bridge, this one even larger, channeled water into the heart of Constantinople, now Turkey's largest city, Istanbul. I'm standing on top of the giant aqueduct bridge built for the ancient city of Constantinople under the Emperor Valens. Boy, does that name ring power to you, Valens. Now, the entire aqueduct span is 150 miles, but just this section between two hills in Constantinople is 11 football fields long, and boy, did it take care of the city's water problem. But it not only took care of the water problem, just as we've seen in all of the empires, if you want to make a political statement with a public work, you build it big. Transporting the water to Constantinople was only half the battle. Once in the city, the water had to be stored, but spare land was scarce. Byzantine engineers' solution to this was to build an underground storage system more elaborate than anything else in the ancient world. Over time, they constructed more than 150 subterranean tanks, the largest being the Basilica Cistern in Istanbul. 336 columns supported its 25-foot-high ceiling. The Basilica Cistern could hold enough water to fill 27 Olympic-sized swimming pools. The underground storage tanks were built in troughs between the city's hills, an ingenious solution that not only made use of the low land, but also provided a flat building surface on top. The cisterns enabled the city to be provided continuously by water, even in the summer when it wouldn't rain that much and there'd be a, merely a trickle coming down from the aqueduct. With its vast underground water storage system, Constantinople's population swelled to an extraordinary size for an ancient city. By the end of the 5th century, the population of Constantinople was approaching the half-million mark. No other city in Western Europe came even close. It was a city that was legendary, uh, even for people who had never set foot in it. 